Do you feel like what we've seen over the last four days is accurately reflected in the oil price? I think we've seen a little bit of an uptick, uh, not a lot of response, and that's generally in flat price been the story for quite a while. Whilst we have kind of ground our way higher over the year, given how tight physical markets are, given the extent of geopolitical risk, not just the latest news with Iran, but sanctions in Venezuela, sanctions in Iran, uh, instability elsewhere, I don't think we're really seeing that fully reflected in flat price. But I'd agree with the commentator you just had on that um, when it comes to what's going on now, I don't think Iran wants to get drawn into a conflict. I don't think President Trump really wants to take this down that route. Uh, so I think the market should be careful about how much risk it prices in specifically on the U.S.-Iran tensions. It's a good distinction. Uh, and I also like that you brought up sort of the tightness in physical markets. And I want to bring your attention to two different spreads. We come inside the Bloomberg. Uh, it's WTI one to three month spread and Brent one to three month spread. And the Brent is the white line and it's moving higher. It means that prices today are more expensive than prices tomorrow. It's exactly the opposite uh, in the U.S. Do you feel like the flat price is reflecting certain time spread tightness and why is it there to begin with? Well, I think the mismatch I really see is kind of, if you look at Brent, that, as you say, that big tightness and that big backwardation in the time spread, and that's only accentuated, you know, we've had the Russian pipeline issues, uh, Drusba, which has really uh, left uh, Europe with a lot of contaminated oil, it's reduced Russian flows, we've now got a whole flurry of North Sea outages, so there's a lot of specific factors affecting Brent, but also you've got the loss of Iranian, the loss of Venezuelan crude due to tightening US sanctions. And so that backwardation makes sense, and I think if anything, the flat price for Brent doesn't look high enough relative to that backwardation. But there are, on the demand side, there are worries, you know, US-China trade conflict, um, refinery runs uh, are softening a little bit. So I can see why, the, and, and everyone is worried also that OPEC is going to come out and raise production. Saudi Arabia is going to repeat what they did last year and push more barrels into the market. I don't think we'll get a repeat of that, but I can understand why flat price is slow to respond. So what do you think the rhetoric is going to be this weekend when OPEC Plus meets for their technical meeting? And what's going to be like the buzzwords that the market has to look out for? Well, I think really uh, they're going to be looking to pump this decision to June. I think they're going to say that, you know, there's not enough data, there are positive signs, but the job isn't done yet and they're monitoring very closely. And so they're going to do as little as possible uh, to give the market a sign. And I think that means June becomes really important because I think before that people will be worried uh, that second half of the year supplies are going to surge. But in, fa in fact, if prices don't increase from here, I think there's going to be relatively little incentive for the Saudis going into the June meeting uh, to push production much higher or to end the agreement. They're going to want to roll it over and that could catch the market by surprise in terms of how tight it would leave the second half of the year.